Two quick um, power rankings for the year ahead in terms of hurling. Um, I'm sure we'll agree with everything here. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'll make this handy by putting tip in number one, yeah? Where they go now will be interesting, I have to say. But it certainly won't be number one. Ah, jeez, Vernie, come on. I'm just thinking, tip. Like They're back. Just thinking, are they in... Are they, even are they in, in the, the top, top 11? Are they in the top seven, I'm wondering? <laughs> okay, I'm going to just spare a bit of the mess and just put in Limerick as number one, yeah? Yeah, what do we think of two? Um, Kilkenny are obviously three in a row, Leinster champions, beaten in the you have to put them in. By, by a score. Um, new manager. Yeah, well, they're obviously missing a couple of players. They're missing two starters from the All-Ireland final in, in Mikey Carey and Connor Brown. Richie Lahey is away, James Maher is away, all the elder statesmen are staying on board. No sign of a Colin Fenley return. Um, yeah, I'll put it this way, but I think Galway will mm, just about do better than Kilkenny this year. But, wow. Yeah, well, I kind of said... Galway who regularly dung the course against uh, Kilkenny. <laughs> Am um, I wrong? I, I think we both had Galway for winning Leinster this year I think in our predictions at the start of the year uh, but I think Kilkenny do have to be number two the big thing there now next is Galway have an easier path you would say to the latter stages of the All-Ireland final from the province that they're coming from just because yeah. it's like Munster is unbelievably cutthroat but you know are they the third best team in the country or is you know a Waterford or a Cork or a Clare and Adrian McGrath just going to get on to me here now and say that because I've written Clare off and think they're going to come potentially come fifth in Munster that that opinion obviously might change as the season goes on that's just my opinion at the start of the year okay so we're agreeing that partly by dint of their route that Galway have to be in at number three here um yeah well I think so I like, can look how look how close they pushed Limerick last year as well like yeah, don't the know disrespect... if they're a number three team now. I don't know if they're a number three team now, but listen. Well, well look, the, the reason that I think we may end up putting them there is because who are we? Who do we guarantee will come out of Munster? I mean, at such a bare pitch, you couldn't guarantee anyone would come out. But look, Limerick are coming out, yeah? Limerick are coming out, yeah. Of course. So with any degree of certainty, who else is definitely coming out of Munster? Ah. Uh... So... That well, that... Waterford, like I had Waterford, I had Waterford up high, and now they've no home games, and like that does not help. That it just so, is not an advantage in any way. It's a disadvantage, and it probably puts them down the pecking order a tiny bit. Right. So Kilkenny and Galway are both definitely coming out of Leinster, yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, do you think that Wexford are definitely coming out? Obviously, Dublin, who've had I think ten retirees over the winter. Still think they'll get a bounce out of Michal Donahue. Yeah, they possibly will. So, but the only two definites, as we see it now, look, we're we're trying to do this quickly by being a little bit dismissive. By yeah, I know what you're there. I know what you're saying. Yeah. So that's why I think we're just going to have to nearly put them second and third because there's nobody outside of Limerick that we're we're feeling like we're guaranteed they're going to go through Munster. Yeah. No. Okay. Okay. I'll go with that. Yeah. Okay. So I I typed Waterford in there. I I don't know if I believe it as I'm typing them in I'm typing it in there, but. I find it hard to believe that they're as bad as last summer suggested. I'd, I'd be the same as well, Shane. I think there's serious potential there. And even like the likes of Patrick Fitzgerald coming into the a forward line that already includes, would say, Desi Hutchinson, potentially uh, Austin Gleeson, potentially a Parik Mahoney kind of returning to that equation as well. Um, still no word on, on whether Stephen O'Keefe is coming back in. That would have a bit of a, a, bit of a bearing on where, on where I'd be putting them. I don't... I, you know I rate Waterford, and I think you do too, but can we viably put them at number four based on last year, based on um, the first week of April onwards? Yeah, you make a fair point. So I have just adjusted that. I think this is what you're trying to say to me, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> most, most, definitely, most definitely not. Um, I, I think my predictions for what, Will happen like what might happen in Munster this year with Clare should not detract the fact that they should be high up. Like, and not been smart if Clare are number four, you have last year's four All Ireland semi finalists there. You have a team that ran Limerick to within an inch of their uh, you know, within an inch of their Munster title. 
um, at number four. And I, I think that's kind of fair enough to be, you know. Yeah, the height they got to last year, you, like if they were, if Leinster wasn't so comparatively easy, I'm not saying it's easy, but comparatively, you'd probably have Clare above Galway here because Galway, it was only really against Limerick that they really showed a huge level of performance um, throughout the entirety of last year's championship. Whereas Clare did it a couple of days in Munster, a number of days, and that performance in the Munster final was higher than what we've seen from everyone bar Kilkenny in defeat to Limerick. So that's why I'd probably have them up a little bit higher if Galway had to be in, in Munster, for example. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'd, I'd go with that there, yeah. I'd go with that yeah. as well, yeah. Adrian McGrath, Clare native, of course. Uh, Limerick's team is not changing. They have really talented young players like O'Neill, English and so on, but if they don't get it uh, selected, they stop developing. P.S., Galway me ars FFS. Everyone knows what FFS means. So uh, yeah, I I think um I think Colin O'Neill, Adam English, Colin Colin Coughlin, and those have been dealt with quite well. To be honest with you, I think they've gotten you know they've gotten a decent bit of game time, and I think they'll get they'll get a fair bit more this year. But like, you're not just going to throw them. I don't I don't think you're just going to change the starting fifteen just for the sake of it, unless you know what I mean. Like unless lads are. You know, it's the same as Tipperary a couple of years ago. Yeah, there's loads of other lads there uh, with underage success, but you have to judge what you're seeing. I think on on the training field, I know, and I there will be bits and pieces of changes. They'll all have a bigger role again this year. Like Carl O'Neill came on the All Ireland final last year. Do you know what I mean? He's a fair detail too. Uh, this is a good point from A Sully one eighty. Aidan McCarthy coming back properly for Clare this year. Mark Rogers flying. Clare will get out of Munster. No problem. No problem. Wow. Uh, I was going with you there, Andrew, until the last and until the last two words. There won't be. I think Limerick won't even be getting out of Munster. No problem. You know what I mean? Yeah. Clare qualified for the Munster final, top of the table. Watford will be playing with five forwards without Conor McDonald or Shane O'Donnell with exceptional ball winning, ball winning, I should say. But they do have Pat Fitzgerald. They do have uh, Desi Hutchinson. They have Ozzy Gleeson, who may or may not be in the forwards um, in this coming season. He was against Tipperary last week in that monster hurling game so maybe that's important to things to come as a limerick man i'm happy not to go to walsh park with a hyped up davy on the sideline having his first go at this limerick uh, team and then there's a bit of niggle between the two teams ever before davy says pw 74 wouldn't expect to see o'neill cochran and english during the league all involved in fitzgibbon cup what is the criteria here uh is it who will i presume who will win no to me it's a it's a multitude of things there's no exact way you can do it it's like what has their history been who's got players coming back who's changed managements and therefore what we think will happen this year head to head and also the fact that they're in different provinces that skew it slightly. So I don't think you can have any hard and fast criteria. Just to finish out his question, is it what the top 10 or who's most likely to make the final versus Limerick? It's it's all of those things, really. It's very hard to be hard and fast with this. Uh, it's it's kind of like the All-Stars, but probably with, it's probably even more subjective, you'd have yeah. to say, because it's potential routes to where they're going to get to this year. Uh, it's who we think is going to come out of two provinces this year. It's what manager we think is good. The teams are going to get a bounce out of this year, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a, yeah, there's a lot of variables to it. And not been smart, there's a lot of, of opinion in it as well. Yeah, and it's not like if every team played each other twice home and away over the course of the season, it'd be far easier to do this. But we can't. We have to work with it. So we're happy enough with that top four. Uh, who do you think is number five? Number five, um, you know, as I said, I, I couldn't stand over uh, Waterford at five, but I like it's funny. I have I have a team at number four that I that I don't think will get out. That I think potentially mightn't get out of Munster, but uh, I I am placing a lot of stock in Munster and the competitiveness of it. Um, yeah, I probably have Waterford ahead of Cork. Even though no, no, I'm, no, 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 yeah, no, no, I'm, 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 no, no, I'm, I'm okay with that. They were beaten in all Ireland quarter final by a score. Um, they have a new manager in who's got a, you know, really good proven pedigree at underage level and is a good pedigree. Obviously, when he was involved with the the setup before, God, you've just gone and filled them all in. You've just, well, you've just, <laughs> just gone I'm, and done it all. Do you do you object? I can't believe. You're after putting Tipperary in an eight voluntarily but, without, but without your arm being twisted. I don't think they're the eighth best team. And I think I think Tipperary will get out of Munster this year. But it's very hard for me to make a real case that's going to stand up at the moment. And I, th I think Tipperary would beat Wexford in the championship, certainly. Uh, I think Tipperary could beat most of the teams ahead of them in that table. Most of them, not all of them. 
Um, obviously, Tipperary are 2024 All Ireland champions. That's that obviously goes without saying. If Tip, play, if Tip played Wexford, how would that go? Tip would win. See, the, t- the thing on that is, is that you're based on last year. Tip flunked Munster, Waterford got out of Leinster and put up a you know a good show in All Ireland quarter final and were there within five minutes of winning an All Ireland quarter final, shall we say. So, I think there's yeah, you're placing some stock in last year, you're placing some stock in this year, and falling in the middle. So I'm okay to have tip behind Wexford at the moment. Yeah, at this moment in time. Yeah. So is there anything you object to there? Like uh, Dublin are down pretty far, uh, based on what you're saying about getting a kick from Donahue. Yeah, they might get a kick from Donahue. They still mightn't get out of Leinster. Um, but like last year was really disappointing, Shane. When you, you know, when they beat Wexford down in Wexford Park. And still didn't manage to get out of Leinster. Like they were on the front foot then. They were in a really good position and couldn't kick on. And if you look at it, there's going to be no Chris Crummy, who is one of the heartbeats, I would say, of uh, of that Dublin squad. Going to be no Liam Rush, no Keno Callaghan, who was vice captain last year. No um, Mark Shute, no Reen McBride. There's there's about 10 different guys. But I'll tell you, I watched them last weekend and I was pretty impressed with what I saw. Yeah, um, and there's going to be a lot of good Crokes players coming into that, but a lot of good Crokes players that you know probably haven't played a huge amount of County Hurling um, outside of maybe Fergal Whiteley or that. Um, so I'd You're be happy Ronan enough. Hayes is... that, yeah, Ronan Hayes, I'd be happy enough. But I'd be expecting more than that. I'm expecting another good handful of lads to go in, but a lot of them wouldn't have played senior inter-county before. Let's just see. Limerick, Kilkenny, Galway, Clare, Cork, Watford, Wexford, Tip, Dublin, Westmead and Antrim. Like Westmead uh, stayed up in Leinster last year, so that's why they're ahead of Antrim, who've bounced back after winning the Joe McDonough. I think it's fair to have Westmead ahead. Yeah, Antrim are only coming back up. I think that's okay to say. And I see uh, a few people saying Antrim ahead of Dublin, but how did that work out when they last met in the in the Leinster Championship a couple of years ago? I tipped Antrim to give Dublin a good run, and they were beaten by about 20 points in Park Talton. Yeah, which I had told you would happen. <laughs> so that's our. That, we're happy enough? That's yeah, our enough. top 11. Okay, we'll just run through it one more time. Keep the comments coming in. Well, Cassius King says, tip to finish bottom of Monster again. You heard it here first. So our top 11 is Limerick, Go- uh, Kilkenny, Galway, Clare, Cork, Waterford, Wexford, tip, Dublin, Westmead, and Antrim. That's not necessarily saying that we think that number one would always be two and six would beat seven and so on. We're just adding everything in together. That's kind of what we've come to. Uh, 